Hey, what's up? I'm Steven, your average 18-year-old just trying to make it through high school without losing my mind. Before I dive into this crazy story, do me a solid and hit that like and subscribe button, all right? Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this wild ride. I'm in my final year of high school, working my butt off to keep my grades up while juggling a part-time job at the local diner. Sounds pretty normal, right? Well, throw in a pair of divorced parents who can't stand each other, and you've got yourself a recipe for disaster? Let me break it down for you. Four years ago, when I was 14, my folks decided to call it quits. And, man, was it ugly. I'm talking screaming matches, slamming doors, the whole nine yards. Ever since then, it's been like living in a war zone. Steven, tell your mother she's late with the child's support. Again! Oh yeah? Well, you can tell your father he's not getting an extra weekend this month. It's like, come on people, I'm right here. Can't you just text each other or something? Anyway, between their constant bickering and trying to turn me against each other, it's a miracle I can even focus on school. But I've got my ways of coping. There's my best bud Mike, who's always down for a game of hoops when things get too intense at home. Yo, Steve, want to shoot some baskets? Sounds like World War III over at your place. Then there's my girlfriend, Olivia. Man, I don't know what I'd do without her. She's like this calm in the middle of my personal storm, you know? Steven, breathe. Remember, their issues aren't your issues. You've got this. And I can't forget about Mrs. Thompson, my English teacher. She's been a real lifesaver, always willing to give me an extension when family drama messes with my homework schedule. Stephen, I understand things are difficult at home. Just do your best and get it to me when you can. So here I am, on the verge of graduation. I should be pumped, right? I mean, I am, but there's this knot in my stomach that won't go away. See, both my parents are going to be there, in the same place, at the same time. It's like I'm sitting on a ticking time bomb, just praying they can keep it together for one day. Just one day. Is that too much to ask? I've tried talking to them both, separately, of course. Mom, Dad, please, this is important to me. Can you guys just, I don't know, uh, ignore each other for a few hours? They both promised they'd behave, but I've heard that before. Last Thanksgiving was supposed to be civil, too, and we all know how that turned out. Let's just say the turkey wasn't the only thing that got carved that day. Graduation Day the day I'd been dreaming of and dreading in equal measure. I woke up at the crack of dawn, my stomach in knots. My plan was simple. Keep mom and dad as far apart as possible. Easy, right? Yeah, not so much. I called mom first. Hey, can you sit on the left side of the auditorium? Thanks. Then dad. Uh, how about you take a seat on the right? I felt like a UN peacekeeper, establishing DMZs in our high school gym. As I adjusted my cap and gown, Olivia texted, You've got this, babe. Deep breaths. If only she knew how much I needed that. The ceremony started, and I scanned the crowd. Mom, looking like she'd rather be anywhere else. Dad, checking his watch every five seconds. So far, so good. Principal Roberts droned on about bright futures and new beginnings. All I could think was, Please, just let me get my diploma and get out of here. Then came the moment of truth. Stephen Matthews, Principal Roberts called. I stood up, heart pounding. Left foot, right foot, don't trip. I made it to the stage, reached for my diploma, and that's when all hell broke loose. That's my boy, Dad yelled way too loud. Oh, suddenly he's your boy? Mom shot back. I froze. No, 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 not now, please, not now. What's that supposed to mean? Dad was on his feet. You know exactly what it means, you deadbeat. Mom was up too, storming towards the stage. It happened so fast. One minute, I'm shaking the principal's hand. The next, my parents are on stage, shoving each other. Then, bam! Dad's fist connected with Mom's jaw. She stumbled back, then lunged at him, nails out. The gym erupted. People were screaming. Kids were laughing. Phones were out recording everything. Principal Roberts tried to intervene, but caught an elbow to the face for his troubles. Security guards rushed in, but it was like trying to separate two rabid dogs. Me? I just stood there, diploma clutched in my hand, watching my worst nightmare unfold in high definition. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Mrs. Thompson. 
Stephen, honey, you should go. I didn't need to be told twice. I bolted off that stage so fast you'd think my gown was on fire. I pushed through the crowd, past shocked faces and pitying looks out into the parking lot. I could still hear the chaos inside as I fumbled for my car keys. The drive home was a blur. My phone was blowing up, calls from Mike, Olivia, even some local news station. I ignored them all. I just needed to be alone. I stormed into my room, ripped off my cap and gown, and collapsed on my bed. The anger, the humiliation, it all came crashing down. How could they do this to me? On today of all days. Hours passed. The sun set. My phone kept buzzing. Text from mom. I'm so sorry, sweetie. From dad. Son, we need to talk. From Olivia. I'm here if you need me. I couldn't deal with any of it. I just lay there, staring at the ceiling, replaying the disaster over and over in my head. This was supposed to be my day, my moment, and they ruined it, just like they ruin everything. As night fell, one thought kept circling in my mind. I'm done, done with the drama, done with the fighting, done with both of them. Tomorrow, I decided, things were going to change. I just didn't know how much. The day after the graduation fiasco, I woke up to a whole new level of family drama. If I thought the fist fight was bad, man, I had no idea what was coming. It started with a call from Dad's secretary, of all people. Stephen, I hate to involve you, but your father hasn't been to work in days. There are some discrepancies in the company accounts. Great, just great. I reluctantly headed to Dad's apartment, using the spare key. The place was a mess. Empty bottles everywhere, and Dad passed out on the couch. But what caught my eye was his laptop open on the coffee table. One look at the screen and my blood ran cold. Bank transfers, online gambling sites, company accounts. It didn't take a genius to connect the dots. What the hell, Dad? I muttered, feeling sick to my stomach. Just then, my phone buzzed. A text from Uncle Rob. Need to talk. Meet me at Joe's Diner in 20. At the diner, Uncle Rob looked nervous, fidgeting with his coffee cup. Listen, kid. There's something you need to know about your mom and me. I felt like I was in some twisted soap opera as he spilled the beans about their affair, an affair that had been going on for years, even before the divorce, my own uncle. Look, Stephen, he said, sliding an envelope across the table. I know this is a lot. How about we keep this between us? There's five grand in there for you. I was so disgusted I couldn't even speak. I just got up and walked out, leaving the envelope behind. Desperate for some sanity... I went to see my little sister, Emma. Maybe she could help make sense of all this, but the moment I walked in, I knew something was off. She burst into tears. I'm so sorry, Stephen. I've been covering for Mom for years. The late nights, the mysterious phone calls. I thought I was protecting you, but I was just lying to you. It felt like the floor was crumbling beneath my feet. Was there anyone in my family I could trust? Overwhelmed, I called Olivia. We met at our favorite spot in the park. I can't believe it, Liv. My whole family, they're all liars and cheats. What am I supposed to do now? Olivia took my hand, her voice steady. You focus on you, Stephen. You can't control their actions, but you can control how you respond. Later that evening, I got a call from Mrs. Thompson. News travels fast in a small town. Stephen, I heard about what happened. Remember, their mistakes don't define you. You have a bright future ahead. Don't let their drama hold you back. As I lay in bed that night, their words echoed in my head. Olivia and Mrs. Thompson were right. I couldn't keep letting my family's toxicity poison my life. I made a decision right then and there. It was time to cut ties. All of them, Mom, Dad, Uncle Rob, even Emma. It hurt, but I knew it was necessary. The next morning, I sent out a group text. I know everything. I'm done with the lies, the manipulation, all of it. Don't contact me again. Then I blocked their numbers one by one. It felt like ripping off a band-aid. Painful, but necessary. As I hit block on the last number, I took a deep breath. For the first time in years, I felt free. Scared, sure, but free. Whatever came next, I knew one thing for certain. I was done being a pawn in their toxic games. It was time to write my own story. Three months after the graduation disaster, I found myself unpacking boxes in my college dorm room. 
new school, new city, new life. It felt like I could finally breathe again. My roommate Jake seemed cool. Dude, you're going to love it here. Fresh start, you know. He had no idea how much I needed that fresh start. That first week, I threw myself into everything. Classes, clubs, campus events. Anything to keep my mind off. Well, everything else. One night, unable to sleep, I started typing. Just venting, really, about the graduation fight, the lies, the betrayal. Before I knew it, I had written pages. Nah, on a whim, I decided to post it online. Why not? I titled it, Surviving Toxic Family, My Story. I didn't expect much, but man, was I wrong. Comments started pouring in. Thank you for sharing this. I thought I was alone. Your story is my story. How did you find the strength to cut ties? It hit me. I wasn't alone in this. There were others out there dealing with the same crap. So I kept writing every week a new post, how to set boundaries, dealing with guilt, rebuilding your life after cutting toxic ties. The blog blew up. Suddenly, I was getting emails from people all over the country. Oh, uh, Professor Martinez from my psychology class pulled me aside one day. Stephen, your blog, it's powerful stuff. Have you considered applying for the Resilience Scholarship? Your work fits the criteria perfectly. I applied, not really expecting anything. But a month later, there it was, a full scholarship offer. I couldn't believe it. My pain, my story, was actually helping me build a future. Meanwhile, Karma was working overtime back home. Mike called me one day, his voice low. Steve, man, you're not going to believe this. Your dad just got arrested. Embezzlement. It's all over the local news. I felt... Nothing. No satisfaction, no pain, just emptiness. A week later, Olivia texted, Your mom's affair with your uncle is out. She lost her job at the school. Your uncle's business is tanking too. Clients are bailing left and right. Part of me wanted to feel bad for them, but I remembered Mrs. Thompson's words. Their mistakes don't define you. I was done letting their drama control my life. Of course, they tried to reach out. Suddenly, I was getting calls from numbers I didn't recognize, voicemails full of apologies and pleas for help, but I stood firm. No response. Jake noticed me declining yet another call. Rough stuff from home? I just shrugged. Old news, not my problem anymore. As the semester rolled on, I found myself surrounded by real friends. People like Jake, who dragged me to the gym when I was stressed. Sarah from my study group, always ready with a bad joke when I needed a laugh. Professor Martinez, who became a mentor, helping me navigate my newfound passion for psychology. One crisp fall day, I was sitting on the quad with Olivia, who'd come to visit for the weekend. She looked at me, a soft smile on her face. You seem lighter, happier. I thought about it for a moment. You know what? I am. For the first time in forever, I feel like I'm living my life, not just reacting to everyone else's drama. As we watched the leaves fall, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The past was the past. I had a whole future ahead of me, and for once, I was excited to see where it might lead. No more toxic influences, no more manipulation. Just me, my true friends, and endless possibilities. You know what? That felt pretty damn good. That's a wrap on my wild family drama. Now I've got a question for you. Is cutting ties with toxic family members brave or selfish? Share your thoughts in the comments. Have you ever had to make a tough choice like this? Your experiences matter. If this story resonated with you, hit that like button and subscribe for more real talk about family growth and overcoming obstacles. Let's keep the conversation going and support each other through life's challenges.